Uh, okay, so uh, welcome all to this webinar about ID8 software. Uh, it's a basic overview of BIMLink Explorer and Sticky Revit add-ons. Uh, my name is Brendan Upton. I'm a technical consultant, senior MEP technical consultant with A2K Technologies. And today I'm going to uh, take you through three of the solutions from ID8 software. So just to run through a, a bit of a quick agenda before I jump in uh, to live into Revit and just show a few examples. So the three software add-ons that I'm going to run through are ID8 BIMLink uh, is, is the first one. So BIMLink is an add-on into Revit, which um, basically lets you manage, manage your data, manage your, your data and manage it efficiently um, in and out of, of, of Revit um, and using Excel um, spreadsheets. So I'll take you through a little bit, a little bit about that, and I'll take you through some examples um, in action um, of, of BIMLink that you can take away. The second uh, add-in I'm going to take you through is called ID8 Explorer. So Explorer is um, a almost like a super browser, if you like, for Revit, um, and it allows you to drill in. And filter out and select, um, drill down into certain detail and select elements in, inside of Revit and then um, do certain tasks on, on those. So I'll take you through some examples, some quick examples of that. And then the third piece I'm going to show you is uh, the third add on is ID8 Sticky. So ID8 Sticky is a, um, another add on for um, Revit, which allows you to. Um, embed, import or, and embed Excel spreadsheets uh, in, directly into Revit and you can treat them as live links as well. So there's some, I'll give you some examples of when you want to, when you'd want to do that. Okay. And, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll chat about that. And then at the end, we're going to um, have some time for some questions. So if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to add them into the chat. Um, I'll leave some room at the end to go through any of those questions that come through and um, and then we'll finish off the webinar. All right, so I'm going to jump over into Revit. Okay, so The first add-on I want to talk about is uh, BIMLink. Okay, so ID at BIMLink. So on the add-ins tab, um, you can see, uh, sorry, on the ID8 software tab in, in Revit, you can see all of the ID8 solutions here. So there's a number of them here. Um, the first three here are the ones that I'm going to focus on and, and go through today. So we're, we're talking about BIMLink, Explorer, and Sticky. So the first one I want to run through is BIMLink. Okay. BIMLink is uh, basically a add-on that allows you to pull data volumes, large large um, volumes of data out of Revit, and be able to manipulate them, you know, uh, change them efficiently, edit that data in an Excel environment, and then push that data back in to to Revit. Um, the key thing, one of the key things with BIMLink is that. Um, not only um, can you pull out the data that you can see out of the box in Revit as the user. So, for example, if you are creating schedules in Revit, air terminal schedules, for example, um, you know, if you're creating other other um, space schedules, for example, this is data that you can see um, out of the box as the user in, in, in Revit, and you can manipulate that data to a certain extent inside these schedules, inside of Revit. But there is a there is a limit, um, and as all Revit users would know, um, there is there is uh, come certain times where you want to do certain tasks and it's quite time consuming, or it, or you just can't get to the data that you want to see. Um, BIMLink um, is a tool that not only lets you see this this data that you can see on the top level, but it also allows you to access additional data in the background and pull that out of Revit um, and be able to manipulate that um, efficiently. So what I want to do is I want to take you through some examples here. Um, my background being MEP, as I stated earlier, I've got an MEP model here. So it's going to be, you know, um, 
somewhat MEP focused workflows here, but pretty much what I'm going to show you, you can take um, away and you could apply those workflows to, uh, to other tasks, um, depending on what disciplines you are. Okay. I'll try and do some, some basic uh, overview ones as well, okay, some common tasks. All right. So I'm going to jump to the RD8 software tab and I'm going to click on the BIM link button. Okay. And this is going to open up BIM link for me. And this is what the, uh, the tool itself looks like. It, it's got a small interface that opens up, almost like a dialog box. Okay. Now this is where you can create essentially what you call your links. Okay. Now it's important to know or to realize if you've seen BIM link a little bit before, um, it, it can look similar to creating schedules in, in Revit. And it, 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 for that matter, it is pretty much like creating a schedule in Revit, but it should be noted that you're not actually, it, it, in the background, in, essentially you're not editing schedules as such in Revit, you're editing what's called these links that you're creating, okay? So further to that, the point should be made that whilst you can export out existing schedules that you may have in your project, um, you know, in this case, I've got air terminals, damper schedules, I could export those out as they are and even manipulate them in Excel. I could do that. But what I can also do is I can create new links, okay? Um, depend, no matter whether there's a schedule that exists or not, I can create new links and pull them out of Revit, okay? So let's go through, I've got a few examples here that I've already created. Let's go through and I'll create um, a new one from scratch, okay? Let's maybe just create a basic um, link here. So if I click the new button, okay, the first thing it'll do is it'll ask me to um, select the category that I want to create the link for. So, you know, similar to schedules, they're based on, it's category based. So you're using basically the categories or you'd be correct by the categories in Revit, okay? So I'm gonna, as an example here, maybe I'll just do for now, um, Let's do the air terminals. Okay, so I select the air terminals as a category and select next. Okay, the next dialog box now is prompting me to, um, to choose what sort of method I want to use to create this link. So you can see there's basic, essentially there's uh, three methods here. Okay, you can create a brand new link from scratch where you can pick whatever properties you want to include. Um, you can create um, a link from a sample. So BIM link ships with um, uh, lots of samples, depending on what categories you choose. There's lots of good um, samples in there. I'll be showing some of those a little bit later as well. Okay. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can create a link based off a schedule that already exists in your project. Okay. So if there is a schedule that exists for the category that you've chosen, in my case here, it's earth terminals, um, it will list here in this, dot, in this little section of the window. Now you can see because I already have an air terminal schedule, you can see it's, it's adding to the list there. Um, and I can pick it. If there is, if no schedule exists, then this will say, it'll be blank or to say no, no schedules exist for that category. Okay, you'll probably see some examples of that a little bit later. Okay, at the bottom here, you can choose whether you want this to be an instance link or a type link. So it's worth noting here that BIMLink works either um, instance on instance parameters or type parameters at any one time. You can't be editing both in a BIM link um, session, okay, or in, in, in link. So just be aware of that. You have to choose whether it's gonna be the instance parameters that you're gonna be editing or the type parameters. If I choose uh, next, it says the, the schedule has successfully been created. I click OK. So what we'll do, it'll take me into the next window where it's displaying for me now all of the uh, properties that um, exist. So because I chose that existing schedule, you can see over here, and it looks similar to a, a schedule creation dialog in Revit. See here on the right hand side in the list that it's got the properties that are already populated in that schedule. What BIMLink allows me to do, even though I've picked an existing schedule, um, I can add additional uh, properties here from the left hand side if I wanted to bulk this up okay because remember I'm not actually editing this schedule this is going to be a brand new link it's just based off that schedule to begin with okay so anything I add to this or if I um, change around I'm not changing that schedule that remains intact okay so this is a, it's a separate entity it's just been based off that one if 
I wanted to, I could come here on the left-hand side and, and add some additional um, properties here. Uh, maybe I want to add level in, so I could add this similar to adding in um, properties in a schedule in Revit. Okay, um, so I've just added level in there. Okay, so anything here that's on the right-hand side, that's what's going to show up in my Excel file once I, once I um, export this out. Okay. So I'm in the properties here, I can add to this, I can choose what, what I want to display here. I have certain filtering that I can change. I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Um, if I wanted to, I could change the available properties that I wanna select from. Um, so if I wanted to bring some extra elements in here um, with regards to rooms or spaces, for example, I could do that, but I'll leave it as it is for this first example. You can see it gives me a little example down the bottom um, of what is going to export for me. Okay, so I get this little kind of preview, if you like. All right, um, you've got an option there to show full preview as well, if you want, um, or if you untick that, it'll just show you a, um, just a, a slight preview, okay? All right, if I'm happy with that, I'm gonna leave that as it, I'm gonna click done, okay? And what will happen is that will be saved now as a brand new link, a brand new BIM link, that is now gonna be listed and saved here on this list, okay? So if I was to close this down, okay, and jump back into it, okay, you can see it's still there on the list, okay, so I can come back in and out any time and now um, work with that link, okay. If I wanted to come back and edit it, I could click the properties and I could add, you know, or remove or make some changes here to this link, okay, but I'm going to leave it as it is, that's how I want it to export. So the next step is that I want to export this out because I want to change data in here, um, uh, inside of uh, Excel, okay, and out of Revit. So the process goes, I select the link that I want to export, I choose the export button, okay, I can choose where I want to save it to, okay, it's, you can see it's going to be saved now as an Excel file. When I click save, I'll get a little message that says whether it's worked or not, so I can see that it's, it's been successful. And I get an option here to either click done or open the file, which opens it directly in Excel. Um, and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to click open. Okay. Now you can see that um, I'm now inside of Excel, out, out of Revit. I've, it's pulled this data out into Excel. Now there's a few things that's going on here to, uh, to worth noting, okay, initially. Um, you'll notice that um, some of these columns are greyed out. Okay, if you can see that. That is uh, flagging that those um, parameters, those columns, those, those are type parameters. Okay, so because I um, exported this as a um, as an instance uh, link, so I'm working with the instance parameters, the type parameters will export out and I can see them, but those columns that are greyed out, they're, the, they're uneditable, okay? What that means is that I can still make some changes if I into these cells, right? It's not going to stop me. It's not going to break. Okay? I can edit those. But when I bring this back into Revit, it's, that's not going to um, make any changes. It's going to basically ignore that. So anything, any of the type properties that are in the grayed out columns, if I do accidentally make changes, it's not going to break the, the link. It's just going to ignore those, and I'll get a, a little message in um, in the BIM link window that will tell me that. Some of, some of these certain data was, was uneditable or unchangeable, okay, because I tried to change something that wasn't. I'll come back later where we can switch this out, these links out so that they're a type one. So essentially to be the reverse of this, we'd be editing the type parameters rather than the instance parameters. But let's keep, keep going with this instance one just for a moment, okay. This, um, these columns that are, that are not grey out essentially, these are the instance parameters, right? Um, most of these ones, right? So these are the editable, uh, values okay so what I can do is I can jump in here and I can start to make changes okay so I've got for example um, a label um, a column here okay so there's a, a label parameter in Revit that is um, that is uh, oh, be, uh, being used as the item number okay or the ID number of that element okay let's say in this case this is indicating that this is on level two because there's a two prefix and then there's a sequential number after the dash Let's say, for example, um, this wanted to change, I wanted to change the prefix here um, to be um, L2. What I could do is I could start to edit that, put an L in front, and I could start to do something like, you know, using the power of Excel, 
very basically here at the moment, I could drag that down and I can start to, you know, um, repopulate those really quickly. It's, going to, it's much quicker than trying to do that in Revit. Right? I'm sure some of you will know. So I've just made some basic changes there. Let's go through the process of bringing that back into Revit and what and um, check how we can update that data now that I've made those changes. The key here is that you need to save the file, of course. And then if I close that Excel file down, now that I'm back in Revit, I can jump back into the BIM link tab at any time. Okay, and I click the import button this time. And I choose the, my Excel file. So this is the Excel file here. Okay, if I click open, it'll process and you'll get this little sort of preview window again telling you what, um, what is about to change, okay? So you can see here already there's, um, just quickly, there's that data that I edited in one of the pipe parameters. You see so it's flagging that for me and telling me that I'm unable to change these values because that's a um, Revit property is read only because that was one of the pipe parameters. There was that one on one there that I put in, okay? So you can see that it doesn't, it's not gonna break, it's still gonna work the tool. It's essentially just gonna ignore any of that those changes that I made and it's not gonna change that, okay? The rest of the rows here indicating other properties that have changed, okay? So you can see, it gives you, just to quickly explain what's going on here, um, you can tell, you can see it says Revit, a Revit property has essentially changed. Um, what it, This has got the information about the element ID um, and the Excel cell as well. But the most important thing here, I guess, is it's telling us what property or what uh, parameter was it? So it was a label parameter in this case. What was the um, what is the new value L two one? What was the current value two one? So you can see there I changed it with that to put that L prefix in. Okay, so you can see all these rows are pretty much telling me that that's the changes that I made, and that's what's about to update. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, okay, all I've got to do is click the import button. Okay, and um, close. All right, and essentially um, that uh, those updates will have uh, been made. Okay, so if I um, jump back into my air terminal schedule okay um, let's see here okay so here so some of these ones I didn't change it but you can see the label parameter here these here's the ones where I added the L in front okay so if I highlight that one in the model that's that that grill there okay so it's actually a, a, a supply grill on the side of that um, foot of that boot there Okay, and if we have a look down in the label, you can see that that parameter value is updated, okay? So that's just an initial, very quick example of the process of going out of Revit into Excel, using Excel um, time-saving you know, techniques. Very simple example there to begin with, but dragging, you know, um, propagating data down and then pushing that back into Revit and updating that really quickly, okay? You know, you, obviously you can make those changes in Revit, um, but you don't have the, the flexibility in a Revit schedule that you do have in Excel, okay? Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd have to jump in here and obviously edit the, each, one of the, each one of these individually. Um, and, you know, it gets very, very tedious, as I'm sure it's, you know, some of you would, would be already quite familiar with, okay? Um, you can see it's going to take me quite a bit of time. Doing it the way I did it with, with BIMLink there in Excel, it's taken me, what, a matter of minutes to basically drag that information down and put it back in. All right, so that's just our initial first example, okay? I wanna now just give you, I'm keeping this fairly fairly basic, okay, this webinar, we're not gonna to get too um, advanced here. There's plenty of um, tutorials and videos out there on, on YouTube and on, on our, both our YouTube page, HK Technologies, and also on the IDA Software YouTube page. Um, there's plenty of tutorials for, um, you know, numerous for different disciplines, specific workflows for advanced editing um, techniques um, using it, using this BIMLink workflow using Excel. Okay, right. Let's let's move on with a few more examples here, just to give you a bit more of a picture. As I said, I'm keeping it pretty pretty basic, but I'll show you some examples that you can apply, hopefully, to whatever discipline that you're um, working in. Okay, I'm just going to just quickly stay in this. Um, in this uh, air terminal schedule for a sec. I want to take you through an example um, of something that you uh, might have experienced you know, quite often in Revit, and that is having duplicate type marks. You see here at the moment of this last column here is the, sorry, not type marks, just the mark um, parameter. So this is the mark column here. See, I've got some examples of ones that have 
Um, this is obviously the same number, okay? So if I grab another one of those there and put two in there as well, for count. You see, I get that very, uh, very common error, or sorry, not error, but warning, very common warning in Revit that tells me that elements have to get marked out. Okay, it's an age old warning. I'm sure everyone will be aware of this one, okay? But I, I think this is a good example to show you that, you know, you can really quickly clean up you know, hundreds of warnings in your model that are basically just due to having duplicate mark values. Um, and you can basically save your um, you know, warnings, clean up those warnings in your, your model and make your model more efficient, okay? Basically what I can do is if I jump back into BIMLink, so I'll go back to view there. All right, if I jump back into uh, BIMLink, Okay, what I'm going to do is click that air terminal schedule again. I'm going to export that out. Okay, I'll save it back over the top of that one. I'll overwrite the existing one. Okay, so it's done its process. I'm going to open the file. Okay, um, okay, you can see here I've got the mark column here and it's not grayed out, so obviously it's editable. Okay, there's those, uh, those, um, duplicate mark values there. Okay, if I wanted to, I could use some sorting techniques in here as well, inside of Excel. Um, but I'm just, I don't want to get too sort of crazy here. Uh, let's just say I wanted to quickly um, rename all of these numbers. Um, let's go from the top, all right? Let's say I set that one back to one, all right? And I could use Excel to really quickly drag that down to the bottom. So there's quite a number of rows there that I'm editing. Okay, all right, so you can see, I missed that last one, but let's just do that one. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I've dragged that down. So that's renumbered all of them. Okay, if I save that and import that back in, so import, excuse my VXL file. You can see how quick it is. That was quite a few rows of data, right? Um, you can see that it's, I'm not getting any warnings. It's telling me that it's gonna change all those properties accordingly. So I'll import that in. All right, and then happy days. I shouldn't have any, I should have lost any of those warnings now that would have been coming up, um, you know, under your manage tab when you go to uh, review your warnings. Instead of having, you know, 500 or 1,000 duplicate type marks here, um, or duplicate mark values here, um, it's basically will have removed all of those. Okay, so that's just another quick example. All right, I want to take you through um, another example here of creating a new link from scratch. All right, so let's have a look at some mechanical equipment. All right, if I jump back to BIMLink, I'm going to um, create a new Actually, I'll get rid of that one. Uh, I can right click and I can delete links if I don't want them. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a new mechanical equipment one from scratch. So I hit the new button. So first of all, I choose my category. So mechanical equipment and I hit next. Okay, this time instead of doing an existing schedule, um, I'm going to create um, one from one of the sample links out of the box. Okay, so you can see there's three sample ones here. Okay, and then I'm gonna edit it a little bit, all right? So I'm just gonna choose the mechanical equipment one. I, I recommend you have a play around with the samples out of the box, okay? Because there's quite a lot in there. It's quite a big load for all disciplines. Um, depending on the category you choose, they'll display for you in that dialog and you'll be able to pick the one you want. And you don't, you're not necessarily stuck with having to do exactly what's in there. You can use it as a good starting point and then you can build on it and um, work on it. And if you look at some of the workflows or some of the videos online, um, once you start doing that, you'll start hopefully to get some really efficient workflows that you can start helping save yourself heaps of time with your uh, Revit projects, okay? So this mechanical equipment one um, has been uh, created from that sample. You can see it's already got a number of parameters in here um, ready to go, okay? What I'm gonna do is um, I can choose some other things here just to quickly uh, take you through some of these other settings. If you wanted to, you could um, manipulate filters like you can in the schedule views. You can change filtering, um, sorting and things like that as well. So you do have access to some of that information as well if you want to manipulate how it's going to be displayed once it goes out into Excel as well. 
So just keep in mind that you've got access to these over there as well. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm happy with that. I'm gonna click done. All right. So that's created a link there called mechanical equipment. If I export that one out now, I'll save it here. Open the file. Okay. So this is um, again a instance link. So you can see most of these are uh, type parameters um, or, or our system parameters, so they're grayed out or uneditable. Okay. Let's say I wanted to fix some of these real quick. I could um, renumber um, those uh, items pretty quickly, like I did before. Okay. Um, what I want to do is uh, let's show you now. So that's pretty similar to the to the last workflow. What I want to show you now is how I can quickly convert this to a type um, uh, link, so that I can start to edit some of these other these uh, parameters like family name and type name and things like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that down real quick. What I can do in the Bimlet window is I can right click, and I have an option here that says convert link. Okay. What that does is it essentially creates a duplicate of the existing link and to convert it from an instance-based link to a type-based link. So you can see I've now got one here called mechanical equipment types. All right, so it's a, it's a brand new link, it's separate to the first one. If I export that one now, okay, uh, it's gonna save it as, as again, as the Excel file, mechanical, mechanical equipment types. Save that, open the file, okay. Now, this is um, allowing me now to um, edit the type parameters. Okay, so you can see some examples of type parameters here. All right. What I want to show you here is now, just to give you, I guess, a good bit of food for thought, how you could start to use some more advanced um, features of, um, or sort of um, some more sort of advanced formula editing um, and using formulas and things like that in Excel. Okay, because obviously, all I've, what I've shown you uh, uh, to begin with is just um, also is, is generally pretty quick, but is basically just using you know Excel to, to drag data down, um, quickly edit um, and enter that data in. Okay, but BimLink is you know using the power of Excel. You've got more power than that. You've got the ability to use uh, formulas um, and things. So an example here that I would would use is let's say for example um, I've got these uh, pieces of equipment here. Let's say I wanted to uh, for example, remove all of the um, uh, spaces between these, uh, okay? What I could do is in here is I could, as an example, just use an extra column here for a sec, okay? If I use the formula and I have one here um, already ready, so I don't have to waste time typing it up or get it wrong, I can use the substitute formula there, okay? Which essentially is telling me substitute from Cell C2, so I put C2 in there. Okay, if you're familiar with Excel formulas, obviously uh, you'll know what's going on there, but just to explain, that formula is now saying substitute the, um, in cell C2, a space or, or not a space basically. So you essentially remove all the spaces, okay? So you can see there when I click, once I click out of it, um, it's moved all of those out. If I wanted to change that to cell D2 perhaps, let's do it on D2. Okay, I'm essentially removing all of the spaces. So let's say you've got a standard where you need, you don't, you're not, um, uh, you've been you know, told not to have spaces in your names or your type names or things like that. You know, this is an example where you could use this. I could drag that down. This is a, a simple example, right? I've only got a few here, but let's say you've got hundreds of these in your project. Okay, um, that's going to save you obviously a lot of time. Okay, um, if I now copy that back in to, oh, let's try that again. Get rid of the formula. Okay. I need to do the space 
paste a special there. So let's go like this. Paste the values. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so if I delete that column now, um, essentially I can save that. And then I can import that back in. So mechanical equipment types. Okay. Import. Okay. So that's just uh, an example of some, um, you know, using using more more I guess uh, advanced formulas in in Excel. If you're you know if you're good at Excel, that's obviously going to make a lot of sense to you. I'm sure you can probably think of you know any number of formulas that you could start to use to manipulate and change your data real quick and push that back into Revit and update those values. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so that is pretty much in a nutshell uh, what I wanted to show you around Vimlink. Okay, I want to jump over into Explorer now and show you just a little bit about what Explorer does. Okay, again a, a basic overview. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Explorer uh, from here. So if I click on that, it'll open up the Explorer little interface. Again, it, it's like a little dialog box that opens up in Revit. Okay. Essentially, um, as I said, Explorer is a almost think of it like a project browser on steroids. Is probably the best way that this is this tool is described. Okay. Whilst in Revit, you've got your project browser, and obviously you can see you know a lot through there. Um, and you can get to your views and schedules and essentially get to your families, um, et cetera. Okay, there is, there is a, a limit, right? You can't drill in to certain levels of the data. Um, you, know, you can't drill in to um, you know, certain areas uh, or, or access those, okay? So what Explorer allows you to do is basically um, drill in and have pretty much a open sort of door into all of the backend data in your and, and items in your um, project. Okay, so the the just quickly the interface pretty much looks like this. Okay, you've got options um, for what you want to display. Okay, you can either choose a, a current selection, you can choose the uh, the active view, or you can choose the entire project. Okay, if I click that on entire project, you can see it's now listing for me um, all of my uh, essentially categories. Okay, in Revit, um, but as well as categories, it's got other things like Revit links. Um, you know, it's got uh, work plane grids. It's got viewports. Okay, so you can see it's got a whole bunch of extra stuff in there that you can't really see easily through the out of the box Revit project browser. Okay, some examples here that I wanted to just quickly take you through um, were things like you can use it to do start doing auditing on your model. Okay, so you can check things like you know textiles, um, detail lines, making sure that there's not sort of you know rogue or non-standard um, elements in your model. Let's say I wanted to do that. Look at some detail lines here in this project. I could go to entire project. I could go um, category, um, and I could go um, leave that on none. Okay, and I can drill into the lines here. I can see that there are a number of detail lines here and maybe some of these ones are not standard, okay? What I can do is I can start to select these, okay? Uh, maybe I wanna choose those three there. They are now selected in Revit, okay? All right, and if I modify those, um, basically, I can switch those out um, in inside of Revit. Okay, so I can see all those. If I, I can click none. Okay. Um, if I go back up here to category and I say audit. Okay, this gives me even more options here. Okay, so if I change that filter now to ID8 audit. Okay, that lets me see things like these lines again. So you see, I can drill into these lines. Um, if I select one of those ones, okay, you can see here um, it's actually selected in Revit now. So I can see that that's the line style there. It can allow me to swap it out to, let's say I want to pick one of these um, VMA ones, okay. So 
so I can switch those out. That's actually swapped those lines onto a different definition, maybe a standard one, okay? So really quickly, you can start to audit through your um, model and you can start to see, you know, is it, is it messy? What What's in there, you know, text and stuff as well. I can drill in, I can see what styles I have, what notes are on what style, okay, for example. Um, and you can keep this open for, for the most part as well, okay, while you're working in Revit. So I can still work away here while this is open as you can see. And I can select elements, okay. So it allows you to, en masse, you know, select um, elements and be able to swap them out, okay. Another good, another example that um, I want to show you, which is something you might come up with as well, is when you're like, um, linking CAD drawings into Revit. Okay, so some of you might have experienced examples of you know linking CAD files into Revit, whether you link them or whether you import them. Sometimes they can get um, potentially lost in your Revit file. An example of that is if you, um, you know, if you load uh, or import a CAD file into Revit into, and you have checked on the current view only, and then for whatever reason that view down the track gets deleted, that uh, CAD file um, can still be embedded in your file, in your project, but there's no real way of being able to select that um, that CAD file and, and removing it from your, your project. Okay, um, Explorer allows you to find those CAD imports. Okay. So you can see here, you've, we've got a number of um, CAD uh, files in here, okay, that I can see. Okay, so there's some details and things linked into this file, okay. If I um, go to a view here for a sec that I set up earlier, all right, um, let's go to this one here, level one copy. Okay, so in this view here, I've got, um, this is a CAD file, okay, this is the DWG CAD link sample two, okay. If I imported that in um, and this view got lost, okay, I, I, there's no, there'll be no way of me being able to select that and effectively delete it, okay. So what you can do in Explorer is you can go back to, let's say, inside project, set that back to none, okay, and okay. So you can see if I drill into the CAD imports here. All right, you've got um, Catalyst sample two, so there's the one that I was referring to. I can actually select that from here. You see that's now selected in my project, okay? And I don't have to sh shut this down. I can then hit delete um, inside of Revit, okay? And um, I can delete that file. Now Revit's telling me that that's a pinned element, all right? So obviously I need to unpin it first, okay? Um, but I can then delete that file. So I'll, I'll just undo that so it stays in there for a sec. Um, but you can see that you know, it's quite powerful. You can see really quickly you know, some of the stuff that you wouldn't necessarily be able to see um, you know, out of the box in Revit. You, know, you want to quickly see what DWG files do I have in this file. Um, you know, uh, so you can, you can really quickly um, see what, what's in there. Okay. So that's essentially um, Explorer in a nutshell. I don't want to kind of take up too much more time on that one. I guess just to sort of talk a little bit more about the dialog box here, you do have some options to navigate through to things like legends and schedules and sheets, etc. cetera. Um, you can also review the warnings in here as well, okay? So I talked a little bit about the warnings before in Revit, the general warnings. Um, Explorer allows you to um, review some of those and, and do certain tasks with those as well, okay? Um, so you can select those and you can start to get information in, in there, okay? All right, so just be aware of that. Um, you've got some search filters in here as well. Um, you can run queries and you can do certain other things as well. So just be aware that, um, I guess in short, if we go back to explore, okay? You can either, just to reiterate, you can either do the entire project, you can search the entire project, you can go to the active view, or you can go with the current selection, okay? So if I've got, um, you know, essentially uh, some elements selected here. If I go back to a view, okay. Um, if I go current selection, it will be only filtering out any of those elements that I've got selected, okay. So you can go a whole project at a time, or you can go bite-sized chunk, select a, a, a section and deal with elements in that. You know, you might want to see what um, families are in there or what, you know, system types are defined, et cetera. Okay, so you can switch those around. 
Uh, <clears throat> all right. Let's quickly let's quickly jump out of um, Explorer. I want to really quickly just touch on <clears throat> um, Sticky, IDX Sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back up to my IDX software tab. I'm going to choose the Sticky button, which will open up my Sticky window again, just like the other two. This opens up as a, as a dialog box, essentially, um, little interface that opens up and floats on top of your Revit session. Okay. Now, Audio Sticky is pretty straightforward. I'll just explain, I guess, the concept. Essentially, what Audio Sticky does is allows you to grab, I guess, non-BIM um, documents, you know, non-modeled um, data, non-modeled um, elements, um, basically, a snapshot of Excel files, whether they're, you know, code lists or whether they're, um, you know, checklists or things that go inside other specification documents and things like that. Maybe you're not going to have them essentially in Revit as such, but you do, you still want to be able to maybe print them on a page or you essentially just want to embed a, a schedule in, um, sorry, a, a spreadsheet into your Revit file to allow you to, to place it um, and add it to your sheet set. Okay, and print it as part of your documentation set. So this is this this is what this allows you to do. Okay, so it probably should be clear to say that don't get don't get this confused with BIMLink. Um, this is sticky is not for editing um, and pushing data back into to Revit to Excel. Um, that's what BIMLink is for. Sticky is basically taking a a um, an Excel spreadsheet and importing it in and, and embedding it into your Revit file. Okay, now the process goes. Um, you have to be on a um, on a sheet view, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a sheet view open, okay? So I go new. I'm going to create a, blank, a brand new blank sheet here. I'm just going to choose that title block, okay? So I've got a blank sheet. That's the first thing you need to be uh, in. If you're not in a sheet view and you open it up. Um, it'll it'll prompt you to open up a sheet view. Okay, so your stickies have to be placed onto a sheet. It's the first thing to um, be aware of. Um, simple steps here. Basically, I've got a create button down here, bottom left. If I create that, uh, click the create button. It now prompts me to find an Excel file. Now you can in, bring in um, one of your own Excel files, um, but again, like the other tools like BIMLink, um, IDH ship a lot of samples with. Sticky that you can start to use them. I'm going to use some of those samples here. Okay, I'm going to browse. Um, so here's the sample, the out of the box sort of installed sample folder. Okay, I don't want to make changes to these ones, so I've actually made a um, folder in for this webinar. So let me jump to that now. So here's sticky samples. Okay, so here they are here. Okay, an example of some here. Let's just bring in. Um, the Philips lighting spec. Okay, so this might be a, a spec that you've got outside of Revit that your engineers are using, but you want it, you bring it into Revit so that you can print it on your documentation set, for example. So I could open on that. Okay, what I can do is um, I can choose the worksheet. So if this has got multiple worksheets in it, this spreadsheet, I can pick the one that I want. So I'm just going to leave it on that one as it is. Um, if I wanted to, I could set the work set re worksheet region. At the moment, it's just set to print area, so I'm going to leave it as that, okay? And I can give it a name if I want, a different name. I'm going to leave it as it is, but you've got the option to do that. I'm going to click OK. What essentially happens is that ad gets added as a row here, and that is now a, a reference almost, if you like. It has a path, so you can see it's pathing to my desktop folder there, okay? Um, if I click on Close, okay, you can see it's now placed that spreadsheet onto the sheet. Okay. Now you can see that it supports. You know, this is not just a spreadsheet of of um, you know text, numbers, and 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 um, values. It's actually got images in there. Okay. So this sticky supports images. It supports color. Okay. So you can have any any number of these sort of things in your um, in your uh, spreadsheet, and you can bring it into Revit, and it, it will maintain. You can see it's, um, you know, it'll maintain the format. It doesn't sort of get pixelated. It maintains the quality of um, of it, and it'll print. Um, it'll print quite well. Okay. It'll bring in even things like date stamps and things. If there's if there's fields like that from your file, um, you can see that's updated. It's the uh, 9th of September. Okay. 
Um, so you can see that that is now um, uh, in my file and that will print, that will stay on that sheet, okay? And I can, um, you know, position it or I can move it around, okay? Because it's a, a live um, link though, what I can do is I can edit that information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in another, another one real quick here and then I'll give you an example of that. So I'm gonna go back to Sticky. I'm gonna go Create. I'm gonna go to the samples, make sure I'm in the right one there. I'm gonna grab, there's one here called Starting View, okay? I'm gonna use that one as an example. Click OK. I'm gonna click Auto Update on this one, okay? So you can choose whether you want it to be um, Auto Update or not. Okay, if it's not, it'll, you have to come in here and um, each time into Sticky and manually update. Um, if it's ticked on as auto update, it'll update as you, um, every time you open the file, open your file, okay? So I'm gonna tick that one on, I'm gonna click close. Okay, so there is my new Sticky, there's the starting view sample, okay? So this is just an example of a you know, familiar Revit sort of starting view. You guys might have used some in your own projects. Okay. Um, I want to show you an example of now how, what happens when I um, edit this. So someone could be working on these files outside of Revit is the other point to make. Okay. If I'm outside of Revit, I can jump into Excel. Um, if I go back to my sample here, I'm going to open up starting view. Okay, now I want to make some, let's say I just make some quick changes here. I'll say tip of the day, um, use ID8 BIM link to save time. Okay, save that, close that down. If I jump back into Sticky here, I can say, I'll just move that over a little bit there. If I click on that and I say update, okay, you can see there it's updated that. Okay, so it is a live link, okay? Well, it is a, it is a, it is a link, right? So um, it will update as the changes that get made in, in the Excel file itself, okay? So it's passed, um, the path remains um, either absolute or you can make it relative, much like an XREF or a link in Revit, or an XREF in, in CAD. So you can, you can choose whether you want that to, what they want that to be. Okay. Um, some other quick examples here. Um, if I close that. Okay. Um, just to show you what kind of happens when this comes into Revit, okay, just so that you're aware. When you create a sticky, okay, um, it does create a schedule in your project. So you will see that it, you'll have some sticky schedules here, okay. The idea is not that you actually, you can open these up and you can sort of view them, but the idea is not that you actually um, use these um, and edit these, um, you know, these values, okay. Uh, because what happens is um, this, the schedule is automatically updated by Sticky. Any changes you make will be overwritten the next time ID8 Sticky updates the schedule, okay? So you can, whilst it does let you actually make changes here, they're not gonna, they're not gonna um, remain, right? Once you update it again through Sticky, it's, it's locked through there, okay? So just be aware that you're not, the idea is that you don't edit these through the schedule here, it's just that it creates these so that it can be placed onto a sheet, essentially, okay? Um, so if I jump back into, if I jump back into Sticky, all right, I'll update that. Okay, you can see it's, it's uh, I'll just uh, zoom that up a little bit. You can see that it kind of did take that change, right? But as soon as I jump back into here, it's, it, the data remains locked to this, all right? If I update that, you can see it's gone back to what it was, okay? All right, so I guess that's essentially what I wanted to take you guys through here. I'm conscious of the time. Um, I wanted to um, allow some time if there are any questions. Um, let's have a look um, at the chat window here. If there are any questions, feel free to um, throw some in. Um, let me check. 
Let's look like we've got too many questions here. Okay. Um, oh, one question there is: Does the um, just to clarify what the difference was with that with that auto update? So as I said, yeah, if if, if that's unticked, it will still update as you select it and click the update button. Um, but if that is ticked on that auto update option, what it means is that um, if you close the, your M file down and open it up again, it will it'll auto update basically at that point. So at the time, at the time of opening the file. Um, every sticker that's got auto update ticked on will update to whatever the latest duration of the actual um, spreadsheet file is. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes sense. All right. Well, um, I don't think there's any other questions here for the moment, guys. So thank you very much for, um, for your attention. Um, I hope you have been able to take a little bit away from that. Um, and uh, we look forward to um, hosting you next time. We have in a, in a week's time, we have another webinar on the other ID8 um, tools, add-ons for Revit, so apps, um, mainly ID8 um, apps, okay? So we're gonna go through that. So, all right, so thanks and, uh, and have a great day.